Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we have another just talk video, I guess it's called these days. <laughs> and I want to talk what I wish um, to be in Bloodlands 2. Uh, disclaimer first, this is not about what I demand for Bloodlands 2 because I'm not entitled to demand things. I'm just a fan from the original. I play it since the release and I don't say played, I still played uh, with mods and everything, sometimes it's out, but I enjoy it a lot. And, and I'm a huge fan from the World of Darkness since 1998, 99, something like this. Yeah. Since then I play Vampire and Changeling and I tried out uh, Werewolf, Mage, mm, not the other things so much, but I, I read all the books. So yeah, this is uh, very important for me. So I think I can uh, have some interesting thoughts on what stuff should be in Bloodlands 2. Okay, uh, I have a little list, so I watch, uh, I look there. Sometimes my first point would be uh, atmosphere. Uh, Bloodlands 1 oozes atmosphere all the time. So the world is so alive, even if you play vampire, but yeah, the world around you is very, very much alive. Packed with details, which creates uh, uh, yeah, such a vibrant uh, surrounding, where you can discover many, many tiny pieces, which together fit so well together, uh, which all fit, fit very well to get what I'm talking. <laughs> um, and what I mean with atmosphere is the music. Yeah, music is so important. Uh, Rick Schaefer did, did such an incredible work. I think it's, it's the most here soundtrack in my soundtrack playlist. Every time I work on the pen and paper stuff, I listen to the Bloodlands 1 soundtrack. It is so atmospheric, yeah? even my brother, who is not gaming a lot and he never played Bloodlands 1, is listening to the soundtrack and he says that it feels like World of Darkness. Just so If you are a World of Darkness player and you don't know about Bloodlands 1, but you hear the soundtrack, it, it fits the mood completely, especially for Vampire. So there must be fitting music, yeah? which gives you then, which leads to the next point, I want a slow paced game, I don't want to rush around everything, I want to take my time, I want to be invited from the map areas to go around, uh, inspect every corner and the atmosphere which is uh, carrying me around the streets of Seattle, uh, how the music did in uh, Bloodlands 1 for LA and where you get this vampiric wolf among sheep's feeling where you uh, just casually stroll around humans walk past you they're not aware of your vampiric nature and that they are just walking past maybe a fatal uh, fatal action and uh, this is a, such a great feeling and um, on top of that these hints that not only vampires are part of the world of darkness. Yeah, you had all of a sudden you had the topic werewolves, then you had ghosts, you had uh, the kindred of the east, you had uh, I guess a hint for changelings at some point at this one building. So you were fully aware that not only you became a vampire, but the longer you played the longer you understood that <laughs> the world is full with supernatural beings which create the world of darkness and I want that too. I don't want only vampiric stuff. Yeah? So the other things shouldn't be um, too strong yeah, because they are rare but vampires sometimes cross borders with supernatural beings and or cross paths. Yeah? Um, and that I really would like to see, yeah? And, and this all together would create the atmosphere I would like to have for Bloodlines 2. 
So it wouldn't, it wouldn't copying Bloodlines 1, it would just transfer the feeling of atmosphere you had from the first game in the, with the second one. So that's my, my take on it. Uh, my second point is I really would like to have a connection between Bloodlines 1 and 2 because the game is called Bloodlines and not uh, Vampire the Masquerade, uh, War in Seattle or uh, Elder Slave. <laughs> I don't know, I'm, <laughs> I'm bad. <laughs> It's called Bloodlines, so there should be a connection, and the connection should be with stuff uh, iconic for the first game. And on my list is it would be Rick Schaefer, Brian Mitsoda, Depth of Night, or in-game characters. So Rick Schaefer already finished the whole soundtrack for Bloodlines to Hard Suit Labs version. And I don't know how this music licensing stuff is working. So. I don't know if in the moment where the shiny room got everything from Hardsuit Labs that in includes the music. Um, and so far when I saw, uh, when I see TCR uh, videos and Hardsuit Labs videos, the music is very very different. So far I like the older pieces more surrounding Hardsuit Labs videos or the, the Vein Pursuit that gave me, every time when I watched them, such a deep Bloodlines vibe. Uh, I have a feeling that the Chinese Room have, has, have their own music composers. And I think if they are allowed to use Rick Schaefer's music, they would uh, maybe... Um, we are losing some momentum there if they don't use it because that guy is highly popular and not just because of nostalgia, this guy is really good and he created so much really good music for Bloodlands. And I once heard that some songs were finished before he started working on the game, so maybe we get it here and there. And when it's at least for the, for the title music, um, there is... Uh, he. Uh, he created the, the theme for Bloodlands 2, which sounded like a Bloodlands 1 theme version, but evolved. And that's what already made a connection. So I think I will cut it in now.
Ähm, ja, Brian Mitzoda, ja, yeah, he's out. <lacht> But I don't know, is, is something salvage, salvageable from the stuff he was doing? So he, he obviously wrote a lot of narrative, I guess dialogue, characters. Uh, he's a voice actor too, and the voice acting in the first one was very, very iconic. Yeah, and I don't know how I would handle it. If people would call it disrespectful to use it, if some people would say it's disrespectful to not use it, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. But from a fan point of view, if I would play Bloodlands 2 and I would turn on the radio, And I would hear the voice of Brian Mitsoda on television. Yeah, it would. I think it would create goosebumps. I would be happy. Yeah, that. That's just my thoughts on Brian Mitsoda. Depth of Night. Yeah, I talked about it in one other video. Um, she was part of the whole atmosphere thing too. So I, I don't see her coming back because she's doing radio stuff in LA. But if we would get something similar, it would be nice. And, but yeah, if, if she would come back, because we are in this connection topic, then we had a connection, of course. And the same goes for characters. Uh, I had the other video where I talked about which characters could return. This is uh, working together. And if we get at least one or two characters, Uh, from Bloodlands 1 that would already create a connection. I think it would be nice, yeah. Okay, point three is the humanity system. So far the devs always talked about that this game will be the the vampire fantasy. So everything is from the point of view does it feel vampiric? Does it feel like you are in charge as an alpha predator? But It is a Vampire the Masquerade game, and it's not a Blade game or Underworld game. So I want the humanity system. I want uh, my my actions have consequences if I'm acting bad, if I'm talking bad, if I'm torturing people. I don't know what is possible, but if I'm playing a bad fire, then I want to have some kind of system which is punishing me for that. Yeah, this is Vampire the Masquerade is uh, is circling around the core, and the core is humanity, and losing a grip of it. If there is no humanity system, then there is no reason to call it Vampire the Masquerade. Yeah, I'm not uh, I'm not um, ranting here because I don't know if it if it's in or not. But without humanity, yeah, that would that, it would be bad. That would be bad. Uh, next point. I want to have a beast system because humanity is one side, the beast is the other side. And you can't have in Vampire one without the other. Yeah, it's very important to have both in. So I want to have a beast aka rage mechan mechanic. I mean, Bloodlands one had all these things. Um, And I know it's a video game, you can do it uh, like in the TTRPG, that it's deep and complex, but just give me some kind of system that my character can, can rage and do stuff which they shouldn't do. Um, I want the hunger system too. Tada! It's a vampire game, vampires are hungry at some point, it's the only real need a vampire has. So yeah, implement the hunger system please. Uh, which is connected to the beast system, which is connected to the humanity system. So these three things all are tied to each other. Yeah, it's very important to have this in. I want well-written clan banes because uh, you can't just take the existing banes from the TTRPG and put them in, in a single-person action RPG uh, video game. For example, the The Tremere, they cannot create blood bonds anymore and they need more effort to create ghouls, which is I think both very very unlikely to happen in this game. I, I mean I see I see ghouling and uh, so creating a ghoul, basically a human slave, I see that, yeah. But uh, I don't see it 
like a strong mechanic. I, I see it more like uh, like a bit with Heather in Bloodlands 1. Maybe you can have another or uh, more options on ghouls, but I don't see it as a huge complex system. Um, and that's why if the Tremere can't ghoul right, then it was, yeah, whatever. Um, so I want a uh, well transferred, well written clan banes for the game, which feel good and balanced. Yeah. The seventh point is V5, V5 changes and how will they, will they affect fire? Yeah, that's a very important for me because um, Hardsuit Labs was never very outspoken about that. Um, their game is based on the 5th edition. I never had actually the feeling and that's why I'm a bit more happy with uh, TCR's version where we get very very often told that this is based on the V5. Mm. But there was stuff going on in the V5. So when Sophia is an elder, so she is, she is somewhat some, some hundred years old. And she is sleeping since a hundred years around, from what I'm getting right. Um, so, if she fell into torpor in 1924 and awakens 2024, uh, in this hundred years, these hundred years happened a lot. Not only for the history of humanity, for the history of vampires too. And, um, for example, if you pick fire as a Bruja, then the Bruja are not members of the Camarilla anymore, they are now leading the Anarch movement. And that should affect the, her character, the dialogue. It should be a topic at least somewhere, or here a topic, there a topic, so that it's, it's something out there and she, she needs to adapt to that. Clan Tremere, this is even, even worse for them. <laughs> uh, they're their clan, or oh, their they happened a lot, and uh, I want to have that too if you play it from here. So how she is dealing with that, because that you can basically walk your own path now. Banu Hakim, same thing. Yeah, When she fall asleep, when she fell asleep, then there was everything different. <laughs> uh, and yeah, Tremere and Banu Hakim, I don't want to go into much detail because it would be major spoiler territory, but there was crazy stuff going on and that, sh that must be addressed, or should, it must be addressed. So if you play a Tremere, if you play a Banu Hakim, then this must be something important in the game, at least for, I don't know, two, three dialogues uh, with, uh, with, with different characters at least, yeah? And how your fire is dealing with it, because she has, she she must make it make a choice there. So if you if you're waiting as a Bruja Camarilla, and you you don't agree to to your clan, then yeah, I would like to see that. If you if you're waiting as a Banu Hakim and uh, you actually agree to the changes, yeah, what what's going on then? Yeah, I want to have something like this. I hope they don't ignore it. And the beckoning, the. The call. I mean, we had uh, this scene here in the in the trailer. Can you hear it? My blood is singing. I will wait for you. And this already feels like beckoning because Lou is some some years old too. So she might be an elder, and elders feel this beckoning. They are torn to a supernatural event. And I wonder if it is part of the game, if it affects fire in any any uh, any direction, if you can act against it, if it is maybe part of one of the endings. So the beckoning should be something, yeah. Uh, I want use of weapons. Uh, today we had in the Discord a little talk about this stuff and uh, developers always talk about this uh, fantasy, uh, this vampire fantasy, vampire immersive stuff you have and I, I, some people already say do we even get weapons uh, or do we only play around with our vampiric powers 
to feel vampiric and if TCR is going that route then I think they would miss out some points because in Vampire the Masquerade and in the 5th edition vampires are using weapons. Uh, bladed weapons are highly effective against Kindred um, because guns mostly are not that effective besides of shotguns, shotguns with dragon breath ammo or high caliber guns like uh, anti-material rifles, uh, machine guns, something like this. But a pistol can hurt but is barely doing anything. But vampires still use guns a lot too. Against humans for example, ghouls, yeah, werewolves, you have silver bullets. Because guns are not masquerade breaking. Uh, your vampire powers can be masquerade breaking. And since in the V5 the second inquisition is basically everywhere and is looking for traces of vampiric powers. Using guns can help you um, getting off your trails. So if you leave a drained corpse um, or if you leave a corpse with cloth written apart or with acidic blood on it or something like this. This is a masquerade breach. If you shoot somebody in the head, it's not a masquerade breach. Yeah, the second inquisition would say, yeah, okay, some gang criminality or so. So guns should, or weapons should be a thing. Yeah, you, I mean, I know why they say we want to emphasize or get the players the opportunity to play around with their powers so much. Um, I mean, I played Bloodlines 1, as I said, lots of times, so I used my powers a lot too, but uh, there are some playthroughs I never used guns, but I maybe used a sword or something like this, and I really want to have that. Some, some possibilities, and it would add to replayability if you could say, uh, hey, I play no powers. Yeah? I, I think about Dishonored 2, for example, that you could have a um, new game plus mode with no powers, for example, and just try the game without your powers. And if they would look into this and give us the option, it would be nice. I mean, everybody likes the challenge. <laughs> uh, why not? Yeah, Give the people opportunity to say, my vampire is not using the powers much. My vampire is using more, uh, more mortal stuff and try to hide and be very careful with it. Would be nice. Or, or a player decides, I want to roleplay a bit deeper, I will only use Fire's power, powers until her her hand mark is, is gone. So yeah, imagine that the mark is completely muting her powers and then she is going nuts the moment the mark is gone. And then you have to rely on, on weapons or other tools. So really have we, you can get this too, or lockpicking, computer use, yeah, something like this. I mean, computers will be a thing for fire, but Fabian is there and can lead her. And if we use, if we use computers, I still want to type stuff in my keyboard myself because I always liked it about games like Bloodlines or uh, GTFO where you actually have to, to use your own keyboard. So. Weapons plus computer use with my keyboard, please. Um, <clears throat> I want well written and rememberable side quests because main quest is nice, but uh, the world is more alive and uh, vibrant if your side quests work too. And I think about stuff like <laughs> you get an email and the, the prince says, hey, there is this Tony Flayton, go there and make him hate the restaurant because I want to buy a cheap. I mean, that's basically some kind of fetch quest, but in this example, if you play a Ventru, yeah, for example, you play a Ventru and you get to the prince and the prince is ruling the city. He just grabbed it away from, from Lou, from Lou Grant. And all of a sudden, a Ventru elder appears at his, foot, uh, at his doorstep. And this is really, really interesting. If you play a Ventru in this game, how this will turn out because the prince 
yeah, that's a struggle for him. Yeah, he's the ruler of the city, but basically there is a vampire appearing, which is most likely more powerful than him because you play a really old elder. And how is the prince handling this? How are you act, um, reacting to the prince? And if you say, okay, you are prince, I, I'm in line below you. I'm Ventro. I'm, I'm traditionalist. I, I honor the traditions. Your domain, everything. And then the prince should give you a uh, task like this, fetch me this, uh, do this for me, do that for me, show me your value, show me your skills. I mean, for, for a prince, it would be actually uh, very normal to do stuff like this, to, to see what, what this elder is capable of, how loyal this elder can be, how much he can push her or them. So, yeah, I mean... I don't want these little quests all the time, but they did something. Or like in Santa Monica from the start, you get an email. Oh, there's werewolf blood. We must uphold the masquerade. Bring it, uh, bring it, please. And this this would be actually a normal thing and a really good reason. There is a possible masquerade breach around. We need to protect us from the mortals. Basically, a totally fine quest for a vampire the masquerade game. Um. Or give me stories where you, uh, where your yeah, where your your humanity is affected because humans are involved or something like this. Yeah, I don't just want action, 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 action. I want side stories. I want nice, written, well written characters for that and dialogue options. Yeah, this is very, very important for a Vampire: The Masquerade Bloodlines game because Vampire: The Masquerade Bloodlines one had tons of it. Or uh, or I, I need money, I mean, she will need money, and then you have Arthur Kil Kilpatrick, and in the end you, you fight a guy with a with an arm in his hand, you know, so... These are the crazy things. So imagine Mercurio, he's on the, he's lying there in shambles, basically dying and telling him, yeah, you need to fetch the explosives. You already can, can yell at him and say, what are you, what, what useless human are you? But he, he cannot help himself, and you need to get the fucking explosives, so you need to go there. And uh, a quest line unfolds, and you decide how to approach. So I hope I hope they, they put some stuff in there. And um, these stories, I hope, unfold organically, and um, don't feel too much forced or constructed. That would be really bad. So if you write the give the characters enough character. Oh brother, this guy stinks! If you write them right, um, then it then it feels organic. The, the whole world feels organic, and that's goes to point one again. Atmosphere, atmosphere relies on everything I told so far. Yeah, and from all of that, I hope for high replayability because I played Bloodlands one uh, first seven times every clan, then uh, every clan again with a different gender. So I played it fourteen times from the start, and uh, well, that won't be possible with this system because we have less clans. But it's okay for me that we have less clans because if you have less clans, but you focus more on on differences and replayability with every, every clan, then I'm totally fine with it. Yeah, if I can play one clan five times and every time it feels uh, different, then yeah, then I have uh, already 20 playthroughs I can I can make. So go for it. I want high re replayability. I want the clans feel very different, and I want to get with every clan different routes I can go. So I want maybe at some point to play the the gun nut went through with high fortitude and just uh, tank everything. <laughs> Why not? I, I once had a soldier special forces went through character just four points in fortitude and he was used being a soldier for the Camarilla, so he was a walking tank. Ventrue can do that. Uh, I want mod support. I really wish you guys implement a mod system because Vampire the Masked Bloodlines 1 is famous for the mods, the mod community. And I believe you can do, do a lot against uh, the hate. If you say, yeah, we are open for mod support, we give you opportunities to 
tweak around with the game, implement more quests, more characters, more more clans, and I mean, imagine the mod support like in a Bethesda game. Yeah, Bethesda games are, in my opinion, mediocre and not worth worthwhile. But I am always impressed what modders are doing with the Bethesda games, that they even create own games with own world, with own worlds, with own characters, and it's mind blowing. And if you give Bloodlines to that, then you already have content for the next 10, 20 years. So bam, automatically will happen. Uh, I hope you get uh, you. You still have options for more. DLCs, clan DLCs in mind, I mean, you already said it's one extra and one standalone. But this is for the start, yeah, so if the game sells well, and I, I know it's a product and I know it's connected to the numbers, but I just hope you don't dump it the moment it's out and just patch it here, patch it here and there. I I hope if it sells well and if it, if it is a success, then you give us a new clan here and there, it would be really nice. I would buy it, promise. So the reason why I I have this list and said all that is um, this game shouldn't just be a vampire fantasy. As I said, it is a vampire the masquerade fantasy, and more specifically, a vampire the masquerade bloodlands fantasy. So there must be stuff in it which distinct it from other vampiric genres and from other Vampire the Masquerade games because it is a Bloodlands 1 successor. Yeah. So that's why I'm uh, so strong on strong on this topic. Yeah. Because I, I have some hopes that this game is the next one which will catch me for some years, hopefully. And since I, I'm with Vampire the Masquerade for decades now, I, I hope that this doesn't fall for short on all the big we want a vampire fantasy for the player thing because if you just do that then you can call it underworld the underworld game or the blade game or the from dusk to dawn game or the 30 days of night game whatever yeah it is part of the uh, the fifth edition of vampire the masquerade so i want to feel that in every corner and on top of that, I want to have the feeling that yes, it is a Bloodlands game. Yeah, so because of the soundtrack, or because of this uh, atmospheric piece here, or that character, or this storyline, yeah, or all together when the end screen rolls and you sit there and just say, "Wow, this this was really a Bloodlands experience." Yeah, something like this. I don't only want to sit there and say, "Yeah, this was a nice." Vampire experience, at least I want to say yeah, this is a nice Vampire the Masquerade experience, but I on top is the the highest level is this is a Bloodlines experience. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that was a lot. <laughs> uh, I hope you stick around. So what what are your thoughts on all this? Uh, do you agree? Do you see things differently? Do you have something I forgot? Do you have more ideas on it? What are your wishes for the game and your take on it? Write me in the comments and I hope I see you soon. Bye bye.